Thanks for tuning in to another video. So if you're expecting a video with uh, really great visual effects and splash, uh, then sorry, you came to the wrong channel. But if you're just looking for a full discussion of the facts and features of the new Samsung Smart Tag 2 presented with minimal fluff, then I got you covered. So in this video, I will talk about the design, compare it to the first Smart Tag, show you how to set this up and link it to your phone, and go over all the important features. If you're not really sure how these devices work and are concerned about your privacy and what information people can see with this device, then stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll describe how these uh, location tags work. But I assume most people who found this video either just bought one or are interested in buying one. So let's get to it. First, let me do a, a quick unbox, and it's very quick. So this is what you get uh, in the box. Uh, minimal materials here, minimal surprises. Uh, great for the environment, but bad for my suspense and bad for my video. But again, this is what you get here. Okay, so let's take this thing out here. So I didn't activate this yet, just wanted to show you what it looks like here. We got a much bigger ring than the original with the middle uh, ring around it, which makes it more durable, I think. Changing the battery is going to be much easier. I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. So this device looks much bigger when you're looking at it on the websites, uh, just because they're, you know, enlarging it so you can see the details of it, uh, just like on the serial boxes. But here we go. We got uh, the tag. This is a quarter, and this is the Samsung Buds 2, uh, Bud Pro, actually. So you can just see the size differences on here, and you can see how, you know, thin this is compared to that, right? And you can see the size change on there. Here it is with a keychain, and uh, yes, I drive a Honda, now you know. But that's, you could you can see how small this is, and this is the original tag here. Let me show you that in detail, I got another one. So there we go, you can see the size difference there. And let me just show you a little more up close with that. So this is the original over here, and this is the new Samsung Tag 2. And you can see the hole there is much different, and this is much bigger, it also has the metal ring there, so it's gonna be more durable. Let me show the thickness comparison on these guys. So you can see there, the original is definitely much thicker. And again, a little smaller, but a little boxier. This one feels more portable, honestly, just because it's so much thinner, I think. Um, about the same weight on these things. And also changing the battery is uh, much easier on the new uh, Smart Tag 2. I'll show you that one. This, as you can see here, this is just a plastic container here. You got to put a coin or something in there and crack it open. And uh, I was in a hurry to do this once and kind of ruined uh, the Smart Tag just because this is all plastic. And the thing I was using to open it was all metal. So obviously, uh, do the math, that didn't work so well. So uh, it did work for the trip, but the, then it was just all kind of damaged. So an improvement on the Smart Tag 2 is that this is IP67 rated, which is pretty good. Uh, most phones are IP68. IP67 means it can be submerged in water up to a meter for 30 minutes. So that's not bad. Uh, if this was hooked up to your dog's collar or something like that and they jumped in the pool or whatever, it, it would probably survive, which is nice. They still have the button on here. There's no uh, thing you could feel or see, but it's there. You just push it there, and it does have three functions. It has a single press, a double press, and a press and hold. I'll show you how to customize all these things when we get into the settings menu. You can also get accessories to cover this, and I'll show you a couple uh, that I found online. You can get a holder that you can put this in so it secures better to a dog collar. Uh, you can get another holder that you, with a sticky uh, strap on one side so you can stick it onto something if you want. You can also get a cover on here that just basically different colors so you can see which tag you know is which very quickly. But again, you don't need any accessory for this. This is ready to go right outside the box, and you do have the ring on here that you could uh, clip anything to, and then basically you're done. Samsung says that the Bluetooth range on this is 120 meters without obstacles. That sounds a bit optimistic, but uh, I'll believe them for now. The smart tag also comes with UWB, which is ultra wideband. This is an upgrade from the original tag. And unlike uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, the ultra wideband operates at a very high frequencies and can be used to capture very accurate spatial and directional data. So that uh, you can think of it like radar. It can tell you how far away the tracker is and also what direction it is from you relative to you. Battery life has improved, and Samsung says it will last 500 days in regular use or 700 days in power savings. That's pretty good. Even in regular use, you're getting a year and a half. I mean, you know, changing a battery every year and a half, I'm okay with that. I forgot to mention, but at the time of this video, the Smart Tag 2 only comes in black and white. Uh, they might introduce more colors in the future, but not as of yet. Uh, they both feel pretty nice. Both kind of have a matte finish, but the uh, white maybe attracts the fingerprints a little bit less but not too much of a difference there. And then uh, there's that uh, hole for the battery injector right in the uh, middle ring there. That's how you put the pin in there and pop out the battery, much nicer than the first design. And I'll show you how to change the battery at the end of this uh, video, which is much easier than the original. Like I said, the original I kind of ruined uh, a little bit trying to change the batteries. But uh, first let me show you how simple the setup is on this thing. 
So there's a little tag here that you pull out uh, to get this activated. And I don't know how old you are, but I remember toys where uh, basically you had to pull the tab here to get it out of demo mode, right? So it's also great having this little tab in here because that means if this device has been sitting on a shelf for a year, it, the battery is not dead. So when you, when, as soon as you get it, you activate it and the battery is basically fresh, which is nice. So let's go ahead and do it. And so uh, this should basically do everything on its own. So I got my phone near here and it just basically tells me to add it. We could add this device to small things, but I could also add it later if I want. But, you know, let's get right to it here. And of course, you need to uh, okay location information, which is basically the reason you get in this device. So I don't know what happens if you don't do this. I guess you can't use it. So let's agree to that. Okay, now all we got to do is press the button here to uh, kind of activate that this is ours. So the location is going to be my home. I don't know. I just have everything set at my home. Uh, and the room is, I don't know why the, there's always a room for the smart things, but uh, this is on the go. Basically, you know, it's a location tag. And then the device name. Uh, let's call it here. We'll go ahead and edit this. I'm just going to call it the smart tag uh, two and uh, black. I have a black and a white one right now. And if I get more of these, I'll just have to come up with some more inventive names. Also, I haven't linked this with anything yet. If I connect this to keys or a bag or something like that, then I'll probably just change the name and put that object in the name here so I'll be able to find it really easy. But for now, Smart Tag 2 Black uh, will do it. And then we're going to be done. I'm going to save it as my favorite. This just becomes up on the uh, Smart Things app. There's a favorite spot, and then you could just pick the devices, you know, the devices that you use all the time. Okay, now it just has to download some data. That's okay. I'll go ahead and I'm going to let this run, but I'll edit out uh, all the uh, actual loading portion. So this way you'll see exactly how to set this up at home so you don't have any issues. Okay, I have a couple other tags on here. I got to blur out the names because I actually have the names of people on there. But uh, I have uh, one for my kid uh, so I could track him. Okay, now we just got to update this thing, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now it's connected. It actually took a while for it. It was saying connecting for a while, uh, for, I don't know, a couple of minutes. And then it eventually got connected, but I didn't have to do anything. It did all this automatically. Now, the first, uh, these are some settings here. I'll just go through real quick. This, you know, you have to do while you have the tag next to you. So before you put this on anything, make sure you set it up uh, all the way you want it in your phone. So uh, you want to find your phone or your tablet. So basically you would double press the key here and the double press is reserved for finding your phone or tablet or whatever device you want. So you have to turn this on and if you don't use it, then the double press doesn't do anything. So always do this because then if you do have the tag and you want to find your phone, you know, it's easy enough to do. And of course, you could do this phone or a tablet that you have hooked up to smart things. Uh, it might be nice if you have your tablet, uh, you know, because you can't call your, your tablet. So it might be nice to hook it up to that. But that's up to you. Now we got automation. So this is where you customize your other options on here. You got the single press and a press and hold. So let me show you how to do that. So uh, we got here the uh, pressed and the held. That's, I guess this is the single press and that's the press and hold. So if we click on this though, so if I do click it once, the, basically I could add a routine. And these are the things that you can do here. So basically the big ones here are you could control devices. So basically if you pull into the house after work or something like that, you could hit this button and it can open up the garage door or turn on lights or turn on the air conditioner or whatever you want. You could notify someone. I thought this was a good feature. Uh, if your kid is wearing the tag and maybe he's coming home from school or something like that, he could just go ahead and hit the button and it would send you a text saying I'm home or, you know, whatever. So there's a lot of options for that. Uh, I feel like, you know, if your kid is doing a, any kind of routine and he just wants to give you a notification about something, he could just hit the button, which is nice. Maybe if an elderly parent has it, you know, they could click it and just check in or something like that. But um, so that, that's a nice thing that you could set up. And if you have other uh, devices hooked up to your smart things, then you can control them uh, through this. So let's cancel that. Let's get it out of automation. The other things you could do is change the volume of the ring. You know, you got low and high, I think. Yeah. So I just keep it on high because if you're hitting this, then basically you're looking for it. So you don't want it to be low and behind a pillow or something like that. And, you know, then you won't hear it. And then also you could change the ringtone. I'm not going to play them all, but, you know, you got several uh, ringtones that you could use on this thing. Power saving. Let me just show you what is limited on this. So we can go ahead and read this here. 
These are the things that you can't do if you do, uh, turn on power saving mode. And if you turn on the power saving mode, you go from 500 days to 700 days of battery life. So if you don't need any of these things, then uh, basically you can turn on your battery saving mode and get a little extra life out of it. And then the battery here, uh, this is, um, you know, I don't know, uh, people complain about the uh, the ranges on this, which is probably an accurate complaint, because sufficient is 16% to 100%. That's a pretty big range. You know, I would rather have it, you know, 60%, 50%, you know, or maybe every 25% or something like that. But these are only the ranges you get. Uh, I guess what Samsung was thinking that, well, we'll give them alert at 16%, because 16% of a 500-day battery is still 80. So it's still 80 days. So basically have, you know, two and a half, three months to actually change the battery, and you'd be getting daily notifications about that. So if you can't change the battery within two or three months, well, you know, then that's probably on you. But I would have liked a little bit more of a range on that. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, view this on the map. Sorry, I blurred out the map and my address. Um, I love you guys, but there's probably a couple of crazies that would track me down and tell me how crappy my video is. So I, I blurred it out. But uh, this is the tag right here. And basically, you could change your ringtone here, or you can ring your tag. All right, we'll just stop that. And then we can go into uh, location history. It will give you, as of now, it gives you seven days of location history, which uh, that might increase in the future, but I guess seven days, Samsung thought that would be plenty, huh? Then uh, refresh, you could refresh uh, the location, and if it you know wasn't getting an update, it will update it if you click on that. And then let's click on more. And here's a couple of things that we got here. So for the search nearby, we'll use the ultra wideband, which is an upgrade from the original tag. Uh, the, the Samsung did have a tag plus that had the ultra wideband on there, but the Samsung Smart Tag 2 replaces both of those. The original tag would be able to search nearby as well, but it would do it with Bluetooth. So it was uh, not as um, precise, and it was basically almost like the game warmer and colder. You know, as you walk closer, it will tell you if you're getting closer or further. Uh, with the ultra wideband, it will uh, direct you much more uh, precisely, and it'll actually give you a direction of where to walk to to try to find it. Now, for this feature to work, you do need a phone that has ultra-wideband on it. Samsung introduced the ultra-wideband with the uh, S22 series, but not every Samsung since then has had it. So double-check to make sure your phone has it. Again, if it doesn't, if your phone doesn't have it, again, it will still work, but it will be using the Bluetooth, which is not quite as accurate. But as long as you get close to it, then basically you can ring it, and then hopefully you'll be able to find it. Now, if you want to navigate, you just hit this, and it will show you where it is on the map. You can't navigate because, you know, we're in the same location, so it, it knows that. Then this is a nice feature here, notify when left behind. So if you put the uh, smart tag in your wallet or something that you can't leave without, then it will, uh, when you leave the location, it will notify you to tell you that it's been left behind. So Lost Mode is a new feature for the smart tag, too. So let me just show you that. So you could read through here. Uh, the big thing here is the emergency contact information. Okay, so on this feature here, you could personalize the information that someone else is able to see if they do find the tag. So we're going to update the emergency contact info here. We just hit next. And uh, this is the email, so they can contact you with that. That you have to put in there. But you can put the contact information. You can leave a number or, you know, someone else's phone number or whatever you want to do. And then you could also put a message on here. So there you go. You can pick one of these messages. Uh, you can't do anything else. You can't personalize it from what I could see at this point. But probably in the future, you'll be able to do that. But as of now, you just pick which um, little information here that you want to put in there. And then this is the only things that they would be able to see here. And if they don't have a phone number, then the only thing they're going to see is your email on the top there. So then someone would be able to contact you if you did lose your device. If someone else uh, finds this tag, then they will be prompted to uh, turn on the NB NFC, and then basically they will get all the information from the tag, your emergency information, I should say, and they'll get information so that they can contact you. Now, why would you need this? Well, uh, a couple of uh, situations I thought of, if you, maybe you were traveling or something like that, and you had this uh, connected to your wallet or a bag or a purse or something like that, and basically you maybe you're traveling and then, you know, you were sightseeing or whatever, and then you got on a bus or a plane or a boat, or you just went for a drive, uh, you know, to drive home or something like that, and a couple hours away, you didn't have the notification uh, when left behind on, and then maybe you left, and then a couple hours later, you realized that you left your object or whatever it was, then you maybe, just maybe, you find someone who's actually nice, and uh, they see the tag, they kind of do the NFC thing, they see your number, they contact you, and then maybe they're nice enough to mail you whatever it is. That would be, the, you know, an instance I thought that would, it would be helpful. Okay, so let's cancel uh, that. And shared devices location. So you want to turn this on. This is important. Uh, basically, if you have, uh, you know, your spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend or something like that, that you are both using a bag or car keys or, you know, a common item, 
then either of you can find the device, and uh, which is really nice because you don't need the other one's permission, uh, but more, you're not doing something behind their back because this is like a shared item, but more importantly, the other person doesn't have to have their phone nearby. So uh, if you're home and you're trying to find the keys that's set up with the other person's phone, it's okay, you'd be able to find it. So I'm gonna turn on the share the device's location, and then this is just one step of it. Now you have to, basically share the location with someone or basically enroll someone in this feature so that they can use it. And you can just read here, uh, you can pause it and read there and you can see what happens. So we're gonna turn that on to share. And again, this battery is uh, sufficient. So <laughs> I guess that's good enough. Another nice thing about the share the device is, uh, you know, I have uh, some young kids and I still have some young kids, but I give them uh, these tags to wear when we go out to a crowded place, a theme park or a park or, you know, uh, some sort of concert or an event. And uh, then basically uh, my wife or myself would have access to their location. So if they can't find me or we get separated, both our phones will be able to uh, track the persons, which is a very nice thing. Now this is our tag. If you click on the top here, this will give us edit device. So you can edit the name of the tag, which is really nice. And if you're using this for something else, you know, you had it attached to your keys, but now you have it attached to your wallet or your bag. You know, you could always just change the name so it's readily uh, findable, which is great. And then the other thing is, once you uh, establish a connection with the smart tag to your phone, it is established to your phone forever. Uh, so no one else can use this tag unless you go ahead and remove it and then you give it to the person and then they have to reset the tag. But if they reset the tag and you didn't remove it from your phone, they still can't use it. So that's where you would uh, change that if you're giving it to someone else. And this is on the uh, basically the home screen of the SmartThings app. You click on the top here, Manage Location and Members. This is where you would invite someone else to be able to access the location of the tag. So if we just click on this, there's a couple of things that you can change, but on the bottom here, Invite Member. So if you click on this, so you got the uh, three ways to do this here. We got the uh, use the QR code if they're with you. You can send an invitation if you know their Samsung account, or you could share a link if you don't know their Samsung account. So that's the three ways uh, you can do that. And then they'll get the invitation and then they have to accept it. And then you would both have access to this uh, tag, but they wouldn't be able to change the name or the parameters or any, uh, anything else with the device. Only you can do that, but they would be able to see the location. And you can also remove them at uh, any point. So that was basically how all the uh, settings work on it. Now, uh, the software might change and the settings might move uh, the pages a little bit here and there, but basically that's all the features that are there for now. Now in the box, you do get this little pin here and this is how you change the battery. Uh, with the smart tag, the original smart tag, you can see here you have to put a coin in there and kind of pry it open and then split it and then, you know, you, it kind of clips together, which, you know, I don't know how many battery changes these things will actually survive. One of them might kind of ruin pretty good, as I said. So on the new smart tag, there's a little hole right there that you can stick one of these pins in here. This is the SIM injector tool that comes with every phone, and then this is the one that came with the smart tag. So we'll go ahead and use this. So let me just turn this around here. Maybe we get a better view of it. And then there's just a little hole there that you push this in. And then you gotta kind of do this. And then this just pops out. This is a standard CR2032 uh, battery. So these are like a dollar. So this is the end of the video, and I just wanted to uh, address any privacy concerns that people might have with these devices. So uh, just for your information, there is no GPS on these location tags. Basically how they work is they only use Galaxy phones uh, that might change in the future, but uh, and then allow it to use Apple phones or other Android devices. But as of now, it only uses Galaxy phones. And when they are near a device, basically the phone will pick up an anonymous ping from that device and it will get the location of the tag. Now that tag, uh, the person doesn't get a notification that it was pinged at all, so they don't know anything about it. Then this location information that they have goes into the SmartThings, Samsung SmartThings server, and then the tag location data is sent to back to your phone. So the Beacon phone has no idea that it was even detected a smart tag. And then you don't have any idea which phone or which device detected your smart tag. So basically it's an anonymous situation all around. They won't have any information on the uh, smart tag if it's ever lost. The only thing they would be able to find is the emergency contact info uh, that you enabled. So hopefully this explained the device to you and uh, made help you make your decision if you want to get it or not. If there's any questions, please leave it in the comments section and I'll try to get back to you. Otherwise, uh, have a great day and I will see you on the next video. Thanks.